works is you wrap the elements that you want to animate in a React. Pardon me? Oh, zoom in again. Yep. Sorry about that. There we go. Larger, sure. Well, scroll a little bit. Is that better? Cool. Um, so, how this works is you provide a transition name, and we'll get to this in a second, but this is going to be the base name for your CSS classes that are going to handle your animation. Um, and then you enter some timings here, and again, we'll, we'll get to how that all plays together in just a moment. Um, but for that collapsing animation that you saw, this is it. This is the, the, uh, the JSX code to make that. Um, so if we go into our CSS here, what you'll see is that this class name um, matches the name of the transition. And as these uh, elements enter and leave the virtual DOM, the, uh, the dash enter, dash enter active, dash leave, and dash leave active classes will be automatically applied. So it comes into the virtual DOM, and it automatically adds the dash enter class, and then the dash enter active class. Um, and then likewise, it leaves the virtual DOM, and it adds the leave classes. And the, uh, the enter and leave verbiage is all customizable if, if for whatever reason you wanted to change that. Um, and so that's, that's really all there is to it. And uh, you can kind of see what's going on with the animations there. Um, and, and that gives us the functionality that we see here. Um, so uh, I guess I'll ask right away, are there any questions with, with this part? Pardon me? Yeah. Sure. So what it's doing is it's automatically applying the transitions at different times based on the timings that we've provided uh, right here via these transition group properties. Um, so it knows to apply the to-do item wrapper dash enter as soon as it enters the virtual DOM. Um, and then it's going to apply the dash active right after that. So then the rest is just the, the CSS transitions doing their thing. Um, it did, yep. Oh, sorry, yeah, I, I understand your question now. Yep, right there. So, so sure. Yep, so that's going to be the exact same thing. So I'll show you the animation here if I remove one of these. He, he asked uh, what happens when you remove the to-do item. Um, yep. and, and so it's the exact same thing as the enter, um, but instead of dash enter and dash enter active, it, it applies these dash leave and dash leave active classes that you see. And so you, you can see that um, as we navigate around here, the animations are taking place as the elements come in and out of the virtual DOM. Um, so one thing to note is that, technically speaking, you will notice that if you remove these two properties here, the transition enter and transition leave timeout properties, it's going to behave exactly the same. Um, and that's because with the modern implementation, all it's checking against is your browser's transi transition end and leave end and uh, events that, that it's firing off when those transitions finish. Um, that being said, I strongly recommend that if you're using these, you leave these properties in place because their implementation has changed in the past. It's going to change again. And if you leave these off, I've got a strong feeling that 10 or 12 months from now, you're going to have a really weird bug, and, and you're going to hunt around for it for a couple hours, and, and you're going to find that these are all of a sudden required. Um, so it's, it's a little extra boilerplate. It's a little extra stuff to keep in sync. Um, but, but I would make sure to keep that stuff on for robustness purposes. Um, and so if, if there aren't any other questions on this section, I'll, I'll move into another. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure, not to my knowledge in terms of getting in the CS. Pardon me? Yeah, sorry, he, he asked if there's a better way, instead of using those magic numbers and just manually keeping them in sync, to define it in one place and, and spread it out across those files. Um, and I'm sure you could work some webpack magic. To, a, to get that in the CSS file, um, but 
Uh, to my knowledge, from a, a pure just JavaScript standpoint, no, I, I don't know of anything. Um, so in that case, uh, maybe a bit more of a question, like an LI with some text in it. Yep. Um, so you've got maybe a large number of like sub elements or whatever. Do you ever have to worry about invalid commands in space? Like maybe it's removed, but then like a price calculation or a whatever would then become invalid. Do you see that with certain transitions? Sure. So I guess I don't fully understand your question. Um, well, because so in your store or whatever, it's yep. going to be so yep. any calculations that get done at that point will be incorrect. How do you deal with that during the transition? Sure. So uh, the way I would deal with that during the transition is that once the transition has started, you should have all your state already cleaned up. Um, you, shouldn't, you definitely shouldn't be depending on what's still happening in the rendering layer when you've got asynchronous um, activities like animations going on to, to keep track of your state. Uh, so, so I would say that the answer to that lies in your state management, uh, whether that's your global state management via your Flux implementation or Redux or whatever you're using or, or just the, the state of a parent component. Um, I guess, did, did I answer your question? Or? Yeah. Cool. Keep going. Then. Yeah. Uh, so this would be like the, the somewhere the Sure. So this would be, let's see, I can bring up our package.json file here, and I can give you the exact NPM module name. It is react-addons-css-transition-group. So you just NPM install that, import it like you would anything else. And anything, any other questions on this section? Cool. Um, so we'll move over then uh, to the other animation that you might have noticed here, which is that when I add something, you'll see a little I don't know why I'm to-doing myself. Um, you'll see a little uh, color fade in there. Can everybody see that, the purple, and then it fades to black? Cool. Um, so this here highlights a little gotcha that, that's really easy to fall into with these, which is that if you look at this, we're rendering our to-do item. And when the transition group is rendered, we've already got our label in there because it's getting rendered when the to-do item first gets mounted. Uh, now, what this means is that because the child, um, the, the label is already in the transition group when the transition group gets mounted, if you try to rely on the typical onEnter event, it won't do anything. Um, onEnter is specifically for a mounted React CSS transition group adding items. Um, and, and that's a really common source of confusion and and source of subtle bugs is you, you loaded this up, you used on enter, and, and the animation is not happening. So that's a completely separate event, and that's this uh, transition appear that you'll want to use there. Um, and, and of course, if, if you just make sure via your state management and, and your component mounting and managing your component life cycles, you can make sure that that transition group is already mounted and, and you solve that problem. Um, but but that's an important note is to make sure that you're using a peer if, if they're mounting at the same time. Um, and so with that in mind, um, why do I keep doing that? <laughs> um, you can see the color transition. Um, oh, goodness. Um, so that's all um, I, I think pretty simple and pretty easy to set up, but, but it gives you a lot of power and, and just quick, simple transitions. You're fading in you know, an, an overlay of some sort, and you're sliding the modal window down, or, or whatever the case may be. And, and I think that, well, it's, it's relatively simple. Again, it doesn't provide you a tremendous amount of power. Anything that you can do with CSS transitions, this gives you a really quick and easy way to, to get them in your React app without you know, messing with the DOM too closely or, or anything like that. Um, so. I guess uh, wrapping up here, does anybody have questions on the whole thing? Or we kind of cover everything that people need? No? All right, looks like we're good. If anybody does have questions, uh, feel free to find me uh, during the socialization time at the end here. And uh, without further ado, I'll hand it over to our very own Nathan Smith.